I remember one day about 15 years ago, I was getting ready to go fishing. And our daughter Rosemary's two boys, Paul and Mitchell, said to me, Poppy, can we come fishing with you? Of course. I couldn't say no. So off we go to Canadian Tire, got to meet you for fishing rod, went back home, geared up the rod, rods, and off we went to Barrett Lake for a day fishing. But it was a nice clear area on the shore, so we went down, baited our hooks, and we're all ready to go. And I said, now boys, watch Poppy make the first cast. I'll show you, and I'll give you an idea what's going on. Okay? Yes. Well, I cast out, and before I'd even reeled in my line, this lure goes whizzing by my shoulder, catches in my shoulder, and I'm hooked. Paul had jumped the gun. He thought he could do it better than Poppy. So I said, Paul, you've hooked me. Oh, sorry. So anyway, I, I got on hooked and got sorted out. Now I said, wait, and I'm going to show Mitchell. You go down here, and Mitchell will get going, and then we're all ready to go, OK? Yes. So common sense told me that I should have done all this ahead of time. But common sense, not so common anymore. And, and I wasn't uh, really, I was trying to get fishing myself, right? But anyway, I got Mitchell started, and everything was going well. Paul made a couple of nice casts, and I said, way to go, Paul. And he said, Poppy, don't even worry about it anymore. I'm a natural. I'm a natural. And then after about uh, 20 minutes or so, when Mitchell hooked me in the leg, I said, well, maybe it might be wise for us to go home and take it easy for the rest of the day to prevent someone from losing an eye. Common sense, right? Well. How often have you heard the expression, let common sense prevail? I'm sure you've probably heard it lots of times and probably used it. I know I have. And in the gospel today, that's what Jesus is using. He's using common sense wisdom. If you went out into a field, he says, and saw a suspicious mound of earth and happened to dig it up and found a hidden treasure, as much gold as you could ever want, would you immediately run out and tell everyone where to find it? No, 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 no. You would do what every other human being in the world would do if they were given a glimpse into what is like to have untold wealth. You would keep the treasure, bury it in a deep, dark place, disguising it so that no one could know it was there. Then you would go out and sell what you had and buy that field. Now, the treasure is yours. It's your treasure. And you can tell everybody, look what I happen to find on my new property. Makes sense, right? Common sense. Now, if you agree, then here's a question for you. Wouldn't you do as much for the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus is asking us this in the gospel today. Wouldn't you do as much for the kingdom of heaven? Well, hmm, maybe that is worth some consideration. But where else can you look for such wisdom? As you might remember, King Solomon was noted far and wide for his wisdom and for his wise decisions. And it is said that the Queen of Sheba even visited him to get advice. So how did he get so wise? Did he just inherit it from his father David? No. He prayed to God for a beautiful kind of wisdom, as we heard in our first reading. Listen to what he asks for. He says, God, give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? Basically, he was asking for a good mind and a good heart to be able to judge his people with fairness and to distinguish right from wrong. He asked God for an understanding heart and he would use it to rule God's people well. God is so moved by his request that he gives Solomon great practical wisdom. Now, isn't it possible that in our humanness, what we want most is something probably selfish. We want possessions. We want security, power, 
pleasure. How many leaders in our world today even listen to the people, let alone listen with understanding? But perhaps the deepest wisdom in this Sunday is in the second reading. You or I have heard the words before. Paul's letter to the Romans, he says, we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called to his purpose. Now, the older I get, the truer this seems, even when darkness and loss affect our lives, become our daily bread. Still, the love of God labors incessantly to bring out a larger love, a greater forgiveness, more acceptance of life and love, even within our pain. And this is the food that we need every day. Sunday at Mass, we can pay attention to those varieties of wisdom. The important thing is not just to sit here and daydream. The important thing is to reflect and to realize that we have been given a treasure of great worth. Discovering God's kingdom is like stumbling across hidden treasure or finding the one pearl of great price. When we discover the kingdom of God, we receive the greatest possible treasure, the Lord himself. Selling all that we have to obtain this incomparable treasure could mean many things. It could mean losing some friends. It could mean changing jobs or losing our job. It could mean changing our lifestyle, changing what we do with our free time. It could mean lots of things because treasure has a special connection to the heart. What we place in our heart, in our desire, in our longing, the place that is special to us, the place of our will and focus. That is the thing we set most on. That is the thing that is our highest treasure. When Jesus had finished speaking about these parables, he said to his disciples, have you understood all this? Jesus today asks us that same question. Have you understood all this? And if we want to understand the meaning and significance of the parables in our daily lives, then we must stop and think through what Jesus is saying to us in his instruction. The Holy Spirit will be our guide and teacher who helps us to grow in understanding God's word in the scriptures. So what do we do? Well, let's go back to the fishing story at the beginning. I continued to take my grandsons fishing, and today they are good fishermen, and they love getting out to go fishing. Mitchell even asked me to teach him to fly fish, which I did. And whenever he's home, we go out fishing together. He'll be home next week. What's the first thing he wants to do? Are we going fishing, puppy? Of course we are. I, I'm so delighted that when they asked all those years ago, I listened. And over the years, we have had many, many memorable and treasured times together. And these are the treasures. So here's the thing. We are always ready to listen with an understanding heart and find the wisdom to let go of any residue selfishness that would prevent us from embracing the consistent ethic of life. And that is an ethic of honoring the lives of those people we love most, but also of loving our enemies as Jesus told us, of loving the aged, the handicapped, the poor, the convicted, as the church teaches us. That is what Jesus wants us to do. That is the treasure of great worth that Jesus wants us to possess. The kingdom of heaven is here this morning in our midst. In our midst, let us respond to that kingdom and let us live our lives 